Today on BRS TV, we're going to start with a new series on aquarium filtration. In this first episode, we're going to go over biological filtration with a focus on the nitrogen cycle. Most of the nitrogen added to the tank is a result of food or other products like amino acids added to the tank. The proteins from these foods can be broken down into individual amino acids to provide a source for tissue growth, or the protein can be converted into energy and the organism will release the excess nitrogen. The process is fairly complex and varies between organisms, but the primary release of excess nitrogen will be in the form of ammonia. Pretty much any organism that consumes organic material like fish food or the resulting waste will in some way release ammonia. Fish will release the ammonia primarily through their gills, but the bacteria that breaks down organic material will also release a significant amount of ammonia during that process as well. Ammonia is extremely toxic to almost everything in a saltwater tank, and you might be wondering what level is okay. The answer is, if your test kit can read the ammonia, it's too high. Even low levels will damage most fish's gills and reduce white cell blood counts, which can increase the chances of developing a disease. This is where the need for biological filtration comes in. How do we remove the ammonia quickly and efficiently? Luckily, it's fairly easy. A few forms of bacteria are going to do basically all of the work. The first type of bacteria will oxidize the ammonia and change it into nitrite, which is much less toxic. And another type of bacteria will oxidize the nitrite into nitrate, which isn't toxic at levels commonly found in a well-maintained reef tank. For the most part, this is where it stops in a majority of tanks. To some degree, there's a possibility for another reaction where another type of bacteria oxidizes the nitrate. This results in nitrogen gas, which floats out of the tank, basically completing the cycle with food entering as organic material and the excess leaves the tank as nitrogen gas. It's been my experience that not many tanks have a significant amount of this last reaction happening unless the tank was designed around promoting this process. This last step is theorized to happen deep within the rock or in a deep sand bed where there's very little oxygen. The bacteria that are capable of the first few steps live on the surface of basically anything in the tank, including glass, rock, sand, plastic, shells, really almost anything. There are a variety of ways to provide the appropriate amount of surface area, but these days the most common method is with rock and sand, which typically has a tremendous amount of surface area, and luckily they're a component of almost every reef tank anyways. There are some other methods like trickle filters, which typically use plastic bio balls for surface area. They work a bit differently than rock or sand because they're typically kept out of the tank itself and water is poured over their surface, which creates a thin film of well oxygenated water with rapid nitrification. These type of filters are fairly common on fish only systems where the owner doesn't want to use a lot of live rock in the tank. There are a couple of downsides with systems like this. First, they're commonly referred to as nitrate factories, which I don't think is completely fair since they're not going to create any more nitrate than any other system. This more or less stems from the fact that this type of filter is unlikely to include any areas where the last reaction from nitrate to nitrogen gas is going to happen. The other common issue is they are fairly susceptible to things like power outages or pump failures. If either of these things happen, the bio balls can dry out and potentially wipe out the bacteria population which is filtering your tank. Since everyone is going to have a power outage or pump failure sooner or later, it is wise to plan for this. One of those ways to help negate this type of risk is with using ceramic media like marine pier rather than plastic bio balls. Media like this will not only have significantly more surface area, but will also retain moisture for a fairly long time if the water supply is discontinued. Marine Pier also makes their ceramic material in large plates and blocks, which is a really easy way to add an immense amount of surface area to basically any tank with a sump. This can be particularly useful if you plan on using a small amount of rock in the tank itself. So regardless of the type of surface area you provide, you will need to populate these surfaces with the appropriate bacteria. There are several ways to do that. And the first one is to add a food source and do nothing at all. Really, there's nothing you can do to prevent the bacteria from populating the tank once there is a food source. This type of bacteria can come from almost anywhere. That said, 
doing nothing is probably the slowest way to build the bacteria population, so the cycle may take a couple extra weeks. Selecting Live Rock or the Ocean Direct brand of Live Sand are some ways to immediately add a significant starter population of bacteria, which will speed the process up. Both of these options also have the benefit of adding bacteria that originated in the ocean. The last way is with bacterial additives or Rag Alive brand Live Sand. I group these together because most additives designed to cycle the tank use dormant bacteria designed to wake up when added to the tank, which is the case with the Arag Alive Sand as well. I've always been kind of skeptical of the bacterial additive products designed to quickly cycle a tank, but I personally use the Biospira product many times, and it certainly seems to fulfill its claims. In most cases, I see little to no ammonia spike, and it certainly speeds things up. More or less, what I just described is components of what people refer to as cycling the tank. Cycling the tank is a process of building up a few different bacteria populations. You'll know the first stage of the cycle is done when your tank reads zero ammonia, which means a bacteria population is built up to the point that it can appropriately deal with the incoming ammonia. The second stage is done when the nitrite reads zero. You have two options here. You can buy a nitrite test kit and measure this, or you can probably just wait a few weeks after the ammonia reads zero and make a fairly safe assumption that the bacteria population is built up appropriately. I suggest this because at this point, it's fairly unlikely that you'll be using the nitrite test kit again, and it kind of seems like a waste of money. Either way, once the nitrite is at zero, the tank is considered cycled, and it's safe to add your first fish. Be slow adding additional fish to give the tank time to catch up with each new addition. There are endless ways to cycle a tank, but these are a couple of my favorite ways. For both of them, I'll put the rock in a bin or tank with heated salt water and a significant amount of flow. Once the cycle is complete, I dispose of all the water, keeping in mind that the bacteria will be on the surface of the rock, and the cycling process by its very nature will produce nutrients like phosphate and nitrate, and there's no reason to start a new tank with excess levels of either nutrient. If I'm starting with relatively clean live rock, I generally just add a tiny amount of food every day, about the same amount I would feed a single small fish, and test every few days until the bacteria populations have stabilized around that. If the live rock had a healthy amount of organic material on it, you can probably skip the feedings and just wait for the bacteria to stabilize around the decaying material on the rock. If you're starting with any type of dry rock that came out of the ocean, it likely already has enough decaying material on it to feed the cycle for you. Since it is dry, it will take a few extra weeks, but you probably don't have to add any additional food. If you'd like, you certainly could add a small amount of food each day to be sure. In either case, you can also use a bacterial booster product to speed the process up, like Biospira. There might be little to no ammonia readings, but you should wait a few days just to confirm. One last thing that's related to cycling your tank in rock is what's known as curing the rock. It's fairly similar to cycling, but what you're doing is soaking the rock in heated salt water for a prolonged period of time with no light, typically a month or two. This will make sure that the rock has a proper biofilm and all of the organics have broken down completely. This will significantly reduce the chances of algae growth common with new tanks by making it harder for the algae to attach to the surface of the rock and reducing the nutrients added to the new tank. The nutrients added from new live rock is commonly misinterpreted as the rock leaching phosphate or nitrate when all that's really happening is the decaying material in the rock is breaking down. Once this process is complete, there really won't be any additional nutrients added to the tank. This is another step that most new reefers will probably skip because it's difficult to have this level of patience when setting up your first tank, but it is worth the wait. This is also a step most experienced reefers will take because most of us have all had to deal with an algae issue at one time or another. And we all know the easiest way to deal with algae is to prevent it in the first place. That wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to be notified of future episodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit BulkReefSupply.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.